Hello my fellow waders, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the second encounter of veteran Lucent Citadel hard mode called Orphic Shattered Shard. As you can see, this fight takes place on a circular arena and arena is surrounded by mirrors. The mirrors are located at cardinal directions from the center of the arena, so exactly north, south, east and west. And then there are another four mirrors that are located at uh, midpoint uh, between those, so southwest, southeast, northwest, north, northeast, and total of eight mirrors are present on the arena. At the start of the fight, you will have a trash pack that needs to be cleared first, and engaging with that trash pack, you will quickly notice that mobs are invulnerable, and in order to do damage to dark mobs, you will have to light the mirrors light, and in order to do damage to light mobs, you will have to uh, darken the mirrors. You can do that by approaching the mirror and pressing your Synergy Interact uh, button. So here, Ruinax are the dark mobs and uh, Atronax are the light mobs. And you can see they are surrounded by certain aura that indicates what kind of color they are. Once the trash pack is clear, the mobs don't return back, so they are not part of the overall boss fight. They, they get to teach you how to use the mirrors. Then there will be a certain amount of time at which you will be able to pre-buff your buffs, debuffs, dots, and so on and the fight will start. Upon initial appearance, Orphic Shattered Shard will have affinity to dark, so you will have to set mirrors to light. And then throughout the fight, he will be switching his affinity back and forward, so you will have to keep mirrors on the respective setting in order to be able to do damage to him. Coming up soon, at 90% and further 60, 40, at 10% of his health, the boss will perform mirror flip mechanics, so he will charge to the center of the arena, and that will be a huge rectangular AOE that you should avoid, and cast uh, tethers, as you can see here, to the mirrors. Each tethered mirror needs to be flipped to the opposite color. If somebody doesn't flip their respective mirror, uh, at the end of that mechanic, everybody receives large amount of damage and group pretty much wipes. So make sure you pay attention to that mechanic and make sure you're flipping it as tether touches the mirror because if you do it early, it won't count towards the event and you will wipe. Mirror flip event at 90% and 60% do not have all the mirrors available on the arena. Two mirrors will be missing. At 90% it's east and west mirror and at 60% it's north and south mirror. Those mirrors will appear immediately after the mirror flip event and they will be set to an opposite color compared to the rest of the mirrors on the room. And when at least one mirror is wrong color, the boss becomes invulnerable and you cannot do damage to him. Those are so-called outlier mirrors and people responsible for them should go ahead and flip them as soon as they appear on the arena and light up so that you maximize the damage to the boss. Healers are in a good position to flip those outlier mirrors because the disc can then go ahead and pre-buff all their dots and be ready to burst as soon as boss becomes vulnerable. When you flip the mirror, you receive a dot that does small amount of damage if you flip just one mirror. If you flip another mirror within 30 seconds, you will receive another stack of that dot and the duration of that dot will extend. So you had, let's say, 15 seconds left over on the dot, you flip the mirror again, you will have double the dot and 30 seconds again. Because of that, you have to keep in mind who flips the mirrors and who flips the outlier mirrors in order for people not to receive too much damage from the dot and survive better. So far, the consensus was that it's eight mirrors, eight DDs, every DD responsible for certain mirror, and the outlier mirror could be flipped by healers if you push as fast enough such that you push to the next phase within 30 seconds. As you can see here, after each of the events, the mirrors will be glowing certain colors. So here we can see they are all dark. So boss kind of flips, flipped its affinity as compared to the beginning of the fight. And respective add will spawn for each of the events. So when all mirrors are dark, you will get a light add called Crystal Hollow Sentinel that performs shield throws and when mirrors end up being light, you will get Ruinax spawn. So those are Daedra that spin around and do damage around them. All those ads will be always uh, matching the combination of the mirrors, so they will be damageable 
along with the boss and you can simply stack them on the boss and cleave them. For the ruin axe in execute, you can just take them out of the group so that they don't interfere with the DDs and don't add this AOE on the ground that needs to be avoided because you could execute quickly and they will not pose any danger. Similarly to the spinners in Vihov Pinnacle Factotum fight, they could be taken away from the group and kited around as they spin by OT. Now let's talk about Zorin. Zorin is a humanoid shaped Daedra that spawns immediately into the fight and he is a smaller size than Orphic Shattered Shard. He has uh, mechanics similar to minis in VCR, so he jumps to the person furthest away from him and he also does lightning channeled attack. It looks kind of like a heavy attack um, to the person who has him taunted. So far, the consensus was that Zorin doesn't need to die and he can be kited around. So OT takes him and keeps them at one side of the arena, while one of the healers kites him on the other side of the arena and sort of baits his jump. As soon as he performs the jump, he makes a ground uh, AOE in a circular shape around him. So it's important to, as you receive the jump, to walk out of it. And it's important for DDs not to be next to it when he performs those jumps. So you have to strategically place him somewhere in between the mirrors so he doesn't interfere with mirror flipping mechanic. He also has a frontal conal cleave that is a 45 degree cleave and it's very, very big. So it is also important to face him away from the room so that he doesn't cleave DDs. And again, it's convenient to have them in between the two mirrors facing away from the room towards the wall and closer to the wall he is, less of the arena will be covered by his AOE and that way he will not interfere with uh, mechanics of uh, mirror flipping. Besides that, a lot of small ads join the fight and they can be simply cleaved and those small ads produce corpses so it's very convenient to have a necromancer support because that support will produce a lot, a lot of ulti by just uh, siphoning the corpses. Now let's talk about the job of the main tank. Throughout the fight uh, you will see that circular or spheric are shaped uh, shards or crystals appear on the ground and if those are not removed from the arena quickly they do a lot of AOE damage and they basically kill people very quickly. To remove them from the arena main tank needs to take the boss to that shard and as soon as boss performs his uh, ground AOE attack, uh, the shard will be shattered. So boss has to hit the shard in order for it to uh, disappear from the arena. So for the main tank, it's important to note when those spheres appear and relocate the boss towards them very quickly. Besides that, mechanics are boss casts um, ice shards on the ground and those hit pretty hard. So you have to make sure you don't hard stack because um, they are casted on people. So if you have five people stacking together, you receive five times the ice shard damage and you die. So loose stack is important. And then once they placed on the ground, just don't stand in them because they also um, are ground DOEs. They have a dot component and direct damage component. There will be small ads spawning. They are very much cleavable, so you don't have to pay any kind of special attention to those smaller ads. Boss will uh, perform a circular shaped AOE around him every once in a while. You can simply walk out of it or roll dodge it. Ruin axe either spin or produce tornadoes around them, so they are kind of a combination of Atronax from Twin Fight in VDSR and um, spinners from VHOF Pinnacle Fight. Let's summarize now what we discussed before. Arena is circular shape and it has uh, eight mirrors placed on it. Cardinal directions and then diagonal directions. So it's north, east, southwest and northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. When present on the arena, mirrors have two states. They glow light or they glow dark. All of the targets on the arena have certain affinity, so their affinity to the dark needs to be counteracted by the mirrors set to the light, and affinity to the light needs to be counteracted by mirrors set to dark setting. If one of the mirrors is not configured correctly, 
those targets will be invulnerable and you will not be able to do damage to them. Main target, the Orphic Shattered Shard, changes its affinity throughout the fight. So it starts as a dark affinity, then switches to light, then switches to dark, then switches to light again. There is secondary target Zorin. There are additional ads spawning during each of the mirror flip event, either Ruin Axe or Hollow Crystal Sentinel. Uh, the main tank has to keep an eye on the arena and make sure to notice a spheres, crystal spheres, and shatter them with bosses ground AOE, circular ground AOE, in order for them to disappear. DDs need to lose stack because boss launches ice shards at the DDs or at DDs and healers, pretty much everybody who doesn't have taunt. And those shards deal a lot of damage initially and then they behave as ground AOE. So don't stack them so that you don't immediately die to initial damage and don't stand on them when they are placed on the ground. Mirror flip event is tied to the boss health, so it's 90%, 60%, 40%, and 10% of the main boss health. During 90 and 60% mirror flip events, some mirrors are missing from the arena to each time, and they will appear immediately after and be configured to the opposite color setting. Of tanking, one of the healers are kiting Zorin. Uh, main tank is focusing on taking the boss towards the crystal sphere in order to remove it from the arena by placing ground slam of the main boss on it. Airways to avoid would be shield throws, um, Ruinac spins, Ruinac tornadoes, uh, circular AOE coming from the boss, radial circular AOE, ice shards placed on the ground, the rectangular charge that appears uh, before the mirror flip event, uh, frontal corner of Zorin, heavy attack of Zorin, and AOE that appears immediately after Zorin completes his jump. And that sums up everything I know about this fight. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. Did you find this fight interesting or do you think that color flipping mechanics are getting old because we get so many different fights using them? Comment down below your thoughts about it. And as always, I wish you best of luck in your Tamriel trial adventures and I see you in the next video.